Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Danas, and welcome back to the LPS Cup's 16th Finals. I'm one of your two co-commentators, Chiska, the other being Elite Cryptic. Yep, that's me. I have just woke up, folks. Um, I, I received a late notification about the time, so I apologize if I'm if I cough or something. I've got a dry throat. <clears> These <throat> excuses, sleepiness. Yes, I'm I'm drowsy. <clears throat> Right. I'm a on today's Rohirrim. matchup, we have Rohirrim versus Dark Radic on the map, the Fords of Aizen 2. Yep, it's going to be Dwarves versus Gondor, so we're going to see lots of late game army clashing. <coughs> Both Sounds very strong. Sounds be interesting. Yep. Oh, neither have put themselves on the map yet. So it's supposed to be player right. one, which I guess in this case would be Rohirrim against player two. Uh, like player one chooses first. Yeah. But I... I I don't think it really matters that much. Well, the 16th finals is definitely nearing its end now. Yep, we're coming up on the end of it. We're going to be moving on to the 8th finals, which will probably be very uh, full of very intense, very close matches. <coughs> Throwing out the good luck, have funs. So yeah, Radic's a good friend of mine. I'll be spectating him. Um, <clears throat> we've done a lot of training together up at, up uh, for the tournament. Oh, okay. It looks I've got a load bug. Oh no, there he went. Whew. Okay, I thought for sure. Just it, a little bit of a lag. Yeah, but yeah, like I was saying, uh, me and Radic are friends. We've been friends for a while. We trained together quite a bit preparing for the tournament um, before the tournament patch released, and I dropped out and just became a casher. So uh, I'll be I'll definitely be spectating him. I can say that I put his skill level at um, the upper levels of good bordering on pro. <clears throat> right, that's good to know. So it looks like he is going for a quick townhouse. No Pippin. And, uh, his name, Rohirrim, went for Erid Lewin. That's a pretty good faction to pick against Gondor, uh, but I think Erebor would prove better because if he has to siege, Erebor has the best siege of all three of the Dwarf Realms. Oh, that, never mind, there's Pippin. He's singing his song. Alrighty. Also, um, folks, on the stream, if you happen to hear any loud thumping in the background, uh, they're replacing some tiling in the, f in the room next to mine, So they're, and they've got one of those automatic nail gun things, so there might be a little thumping. <clears throat> Cryptic's just filled with problems today. Yes, I am. And you were filled with problems yesterday with your mouse, so that balances us out, Chiska. Right, but I've got an extra battery here right next to me to in case something happens today. He came prepared. Yep. Alright, well, Radic just creeping some wild men. <clears throat> Same strategy on Rohirrim's. Radic only taken one of his farms, he could have taken two. Also didn't see Radic go for his usual Baragon start. That's what he usually does on this map. Very effective. Well, I do see that he, he uh, uh, Radic must have listened to the commentary yesterday because instead of going for blacksmiths, he chose the townhouses. Yeah, he's going to go for tower guards. He knows how effective they are. <clears throat> he's not the type of person to spam Gondor soldiers. Well, he might, but if he does, it'll really surprise me. He might get a couple units just to help him early game, but... Just have to see. Maybe this match wakes you up a bit more. Uh, well, once those uh, tower guards are out on the field... Um, <laughs> You're going to get an ecstatic rush. Yes, that and uh, the dwarves are not going to have a chance unless they themselves go for veterans, because tower guards do not like to die. They have, uh, they are stubborn. They're very stubborn when it comes to dying. So, so here's Radic pulling off. You see, this is exactly what I was talking about. You see how those soldiers are absolutely ripping up that troll? This is the this right. creeping method I spoke of. And even though Pippin was all the way back there throwing rocks, he still got experience. So please take note of that, folks. You don't have to make pikes to creep trolls. It's a waste of money. <coughs> Not doing so good on the clumping, though. Have a bear. Seems like a pretty standard early game. No surprises yet. Nope. But anything can happen in a game against Gondor and War. So right now, Radic is doing better economically, but um, Rohirrim is doing better militarily. Radic is just now getting up his barracks. <clears throat> Ooh. 
But we can see four townhouses in Radix Space already. Makes his tower guards. And he's eighty. And he's also already um, creeped his trolls. His trolls. So that that's what he's relying on is a lot of money early game, which is really gonna. Even though um, Rohirrim got some good troops spammed out there, Braddock has a lot more money. Oh, and we have Baragon coming out already. Gonna... Already. Well, I think he's gonna try and creep Rohirrim's troll right now. Yes, he probably Ooh, will. He'll right try and business. steal that. <sighs> creep stealing is very important on this map. We'll see whether. Hmm. I don't think it, he should. He should fill up his base. He should get the other two um, townhouses before he tries to make tower guards. That'll bring them down to like uh, 430, I think. Already got a 20% discount. Pippin level four. Look at that. <clears throat> oh, and he's buying uh, Guardian of the Citadel on Pippin. So he's going really heavily for his early heroes. He's going to try and beat Rohirrim with strong with a couple of reasonably strong heroes. We do have some pikes coming out. Gondor pikes from Dark Raddock. And it looks well, like he is going to successfully steal that troll. Rohirrim is making his Guardians of the Ered Luwin. So I think he's anticipating a Tower Guard rush. No upgrades yet. Raddock still hasn't claimed. Oh, and here we have the first harassment from uh, Rohirrim. That farm, I think that farm's going to go down. But if Baragon can get over there in time, there it goes. There it goes, let's see. These guys are going to, even if that farm goes down, they will tear through those guardians. See how fast they're killing them? Uh, hmm, he is going to suffer a loss here. <laughs> now Baragon's chasing. Well done, Baragon. Yeah, this matchup, um, basically on this map, if somebody goes for a Baragon start and you're Rohan, you're dead. There's nothing you can do since uh, Gambling Start has been basically removed thanks to the Gambling Price increase. They can just, they can Baragon rush you, take all your map control, which Rohan desperately needs, and you are basically out of the game. Thank you, LPS team, for your wonderful patch. Well, you, listen, we are casting on behalf of the LPS team. I'm just, I'm... I'm saying what I think is wrong with the patch, but that doesn't mean right. it doesn't mean that it's an overall bad patch. I, I just think that uh, there are a few things that weren't considered well enough. So we've got uh, Radic really tearing up the dwarves here. Still no heroes from the dwarves he is, except Bilbo. He is not holding back. He's going in all out. One single guardian remained of a battalion on one health. <laughs> How did he manage to save that battalion? If he can get a hearth, that'll help him. So we got a level 3 Bilbo. That's no match for a level 5 guardian of the Citadel Pippin. And a Baragond. You see, people are not prepared for quick heroes. They really aren't. The meta, if you want to call it that right now, is for people to just spam out their basic troops. If you get a couple of heroes, you completely counter that. So I don't really understand why people like to just spam out basic troops all game. Just go for heroes, go for your elites as quickly as possible. Especially, I'm guessing this this whole tournament setup must make them a bit nervous, so they're not playing the usual strategies. Yeah, they want to play something that which perhaps they think is a bit more reliable. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we'll see what happens with this matchup. I think Radic does have the advantage right now, but the dwarves do have a decent moment. decent eco. They've got their base mostly filled. Uh, Radic also has his base mostly filled. He just needs one more townhouse and he'll have the full discount. We see him upgrading his barracks already. Tower guards will be coming out any time now. Your favorite battalion. My favorite Gondor battalion. My favorite battalion are anything Rohan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have Pippin well, nearly dying. Pippin dying. Pippin dying. That's not good. I still see the single Ered Lewin Guardian going for a chase. So he's reviving Pippin? Looks like he's Pippin. got two single Ered Lewin Guardians now. So it looks like uh, Radic doesn't want to quite risk losing this much map control just yet, so he is making a couple of soldiers just to help him. Like I said, he probably would help him get some map control, because that's a pretty big army of, of, uh, of um, Ered Lewin Guardians. 
As he's already queued two tower guards. Yep. They will help. He's just getting those soldiers to help hold off till the tower guards get here. So I imagine this is just a... There's Baragon summoned to save his farm up in the northeast. You don't actually expect me to do it. Very nice. Only one of them's attacking. Oh. Well, that's stupid. <laughs> that's a wasted cooldown. We have Pippin and Baragon back. They're going to be helping. Got some more soldiers. I think he could probably win this fight if he's careful and clever. He's not terribly outnumbered. Oh, he's getting at stables now. And a well. Really? Stables in a well, so he's going to try and uh, get some cavalry rushes in. And that's actually a good move, because if you look at the army of Rohirrim, it's all guardians and crossbowmen. Got no phalanxes, or one battalion of phalanxes. Oh, does he have some phalanx in there? The he, he's got like, well, I, I saw one earlier. I think he's got like two. I don't see any in the army that's currently stealing Radix Creep. Uh, not there, no. He in does have base. one in his base, yeah. <clears throat> but here, no. Completely oblivious to a cavalry attack. So as soon as his next uh, tower guard comes out, I would say he probably has the strength to push out and uh, deal with the forces near his base. <clears throat> Take back those farms. And he's going to do it. He knows that he's strong enough to do it. If you look at the buff on these tower guards, look at how strong it is. That is 50% armor. In addition to them already being an elite, u elite unit which mu with more health and damage than the Gondor soldier. So think about the... Right. Um, the, re the considerations of that. Oh, what are you doing, Radic? Oh, that was terrible, Micro. He basically just lost a soldier. I don't think he was looking there. Gondor soldiers going in formation. Pippin and Baragon Ooh, slicing boy. through those dwarves. You see Lone Tower? Ah, uh, yeah, there it comes. That's okay, though, because the dwarves are retreating, so we can just get out of range of it. I wouldn't it's bother. Like is amassing his money. I think he's going to go for a hero. Probably Dwalin or maybe even Thorin. Uh, most dwarves. Going for Thorin. Yeah, Thorin is the best hero to get first if you can save for it because he can just summon two others. Oh, no. Looks like he just had Balin. a cash float. He went for Balin. Yep. He probably he was probably focusing his attention on um, Radix, yeah, so he had a cash float. This is blading economy. So here we got some knights coming up for Radix. That's going to really devastate that army in the south. Your tower gods are attacking some guardians up at the northeast, of tearing them apart. Yep. Who said ga tower guards are spears? Ride for the glory of Gondor. I'll tell you what they really are. Spartans. Alright. Well, he's, take he's taking back his map control. And Ru we see the first battle wagon on. But that thing will probably just crash and burn against these tower guards. He's gonna... Yep. That th I, I predict that thing will even crash and burn against Gondor soldiers. Well, remember, it did receive a, a little buff. The bash. Yeah, but... I mean... They're Gondor soldiers, you know? Like, they're pretty strong. Right. One of the best early game units. We'll have to see. <laughs> Look at Radic just standing there in several spots. Rad the knights standing still. The tower guards to the north on the farm standing still. Uh, he finally just he must be under back. some serious pressure. Yeah, he's probably having his attention span stretched a bit. Yeah, I assume he probably hasn't warmed up yet. And the first game of the day is always the hardest. Oh, and we see an outpost on the Rohirrim side. Normal Three outpost. That's like interesting. Them. Not a Lake Town outpost. I try to go for siege. Works. Yeah. Well, he's got no phalanx Works. there. He does have Balin, but he can just trample those guardians pretty easily. He's f trying to focus on that army in the south right now. And we have Aragorn coming out for Radic. This is looking very bad for Rohirrim. Once Aragorn gets on the battlefield, it is almost impossible to kill Gondor. Right. Ah, uh, there he is. I know what I'm Not nearly frightened enough. He says as he enters the battlefield. That's right. The dwarves are about to no fear. We don't have any heroes yet coming out. Any more heroes coming out for Rohirrim? So. I think Rohirrim uh, might try to boost his economy a little because he went for two mine, sh mine shafts and a hall of warriors. Oh my God! Look at that micro from Radic. He got a single banner carrier for a Gondor soldier back to his well. Look at that. 
Excellent work, Radic. Excellent work. So now we have an incredibly strong army from Gondor. That army will not die. It's comprised of tower guards. It has three heroes in it. Once the forged blades come in, Rohirrim is in for a world of pain. He just needs to push. He needs to push and deal with that outpost. Yeah, Balin in the north, about to kill some tower guards. He could get them away if he took them off the formation, but I don't think he's looking there. Yep, there they go. Balin, still level one, so that's good. Erratic, yes. I don't like how um, Radic is clearing out farms, but then he's not taking them. And he's letting um, Rohirrim just take them back. Well, once again, I think he's under a bit of pressure. Yeah. I mean, that this is being live streamed. Oh my god, and Rohirrim pushing forward to take Radic's outpost, too. That might be a mistake. We, we're going to have a big clash here. And uh, if Balin could get down there, he might win it. But I don't know. Aragorn's Blade Master should tear. We're here in pieces. Well, the outpost is taken. So let's just see how long it lasts. The problem with Radic here is he's not, he's barely got any economy, but he is going for upgrades, so I suppose that explains that to a certain extent. Oh, look at Oddly enough, there are no forge works in Rohirrim's base. I would have gone for forge blades in this game. Yeah, it looks like uh, Rohirrim going for the incredibly OP forward dwarven defensive base with towers. It's almost impossible to destroy unless you got siege. Pretty good move. We have uh, Radix Force taking out mine shafts on the undefended flank. Uh, and here's a battle wagon on those unprotected soldiers. Not even in, not even in their shield wall. At the moment, Drohirim has twice the command points uh, Radic has, so I think it might be in his favor. Unless Radic decides to bring those Something his little dispatchment at the west, yes, looks like he's bringing them back. He might be able to deal a bit of damage to Rohirrim's army. He's got to be very careful here, though. Two, two. Uh, that's basically one battalion to get tower guards, and they are strong, but they aren't quite strong enough to take on a force that big, even with the heroes. He needs to. He needs to retreat to the base, consolidate his force, and then push. What are you doing, Radic? Oh, he's got forged blades on them. Guys, you see that battle wagon dying immediately as soon as it walked into those tower guards. Got a very big army. Really good. Yeah, Rohirrim de definitely has the advantage economy-wise, but I think that uh, the troops of Radic are really going to tear up those dwarves. You can see upgrades already on those troops. Rohirrim is running away. Oh, or is he? Like. Looks more like a taunt. Oh, here comes the cavalry you flank. Let's see. Very nice, very trouble. nice. There are like three phalanxes in that army. If, he oh. should, if Rohirrim put them on the side, he might have been able to make a better counter. Oh, that, oh my god, that was devastating. That Pippin just killed like two battalions of guardians by himself with his level 10. That was devastating. Dagger of Ronaldo, that is a very powerful ability. Especially, Especially when the enemies dead. clumped up like that. I Oh... That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Very well played by Radic. No, oh, we have a siege works coming up from Radic now. He's gonna try and deal with that outpost. That was a devastating loss for um, for Rohirrim. Radic just got a lot of power points from that. He has enough to get Lone Tower, which he can use to forward summon those extra Citadel guards for Baragond. Hero play. Very well. Very excellent hero play from Radic here. Rohirrim really has a lot of resources, but he's not really utilizing it. He's just waiting for like uh, 3k to come before he actually starts producing some units. Or he might be waiting for Thorin. Well, I thought so too, but then it just all disappeared on probably buildings and... No, he just got Bofur. Really he's getting he Bofur right now. Uh, and we're getting the Dwarven Forge. Strangely enough, it's built on the outpost nearest to Radex base. That's a mistake, because... Braddock will soon have battering rams or trebuchets. <clears throat> Here's another battalion of tower guards. Oh, and look at that, Rohirrim leaving his base undefended. If Braddock were to push right now, see those troops, he's got two upgraded battalions of Gondor soldiers. They are just not going to die. And on my voices. The, uh, the Gondor soldiers are pretty strong too. I mean, by all rights. 
But with him just pumping out those tower guards and throwing them in, in that formation, they they are really really strong. I have to say, those Forge Blades are giving Radic a great advantage when they're fighting. Yep. Oh, and yeah, he went for Lone Tower like I figured he probably would. He still has Rebuild, so he can delay them on that farm. And there we have... Oh, he's going for the outpost. Good move. Ah, uh, well placed. Lone Tower, let's see. And he, mm. he did that to, to draw the fire from the t tower initially. Yeah. Uh, those Battle Wagons should die pretty much immediately. Aragorn in there with Blade Master. He's tearing everything apart. Two battle wagons down. Third one goes down. Good battle. Good good. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The strength of tower guards. Please, everybody, take note. This is so much more effective than Gondor tower guard spam. Look at this. Aragorn's just tearing everything to pieces. And remember, do not place your forge works so near the enemy's base. Yes, that was a bit of a mistake. <laughs> we have Balin coming in here. Bofur is coming in from the west, I think. Where is Bofur? Oh, Bofur's killing some knights. Getting a uh, level yeah. We've got Gondor right in the middle there. Completely surrounded. But <laughs> Oh, but those towers are some fighting for their life. Yeah, tower guards, like I said, they're basically Spartans. And we have uh, summoned Citadel guards out from Baragond. It looks they... like Balin just died at the hands of Baragond, I believe. Baragond is level 7. That's no joke. I believe it's Already, a mistake to try and he should be retreat though, he should wait for siege before he tries to take this outpost. That is Durin's day. Yep. Run, yep. Run. And he's gonna run now. He knows he can't win that fight without siege. But that was an excellent fight though, because he, he did a lot of damage. Yes. We do have a ram coming out now from Radic. See he didn't lose any tower guards. I don't think he lost a single thing there. All he did was kill a bunch of dwarves in Balin. So he literally lost nothing and did a bunch of damage. More tower guards. This is quite an interesting Radic. battle. I think the odds are quite even. Ah, uh, no, I'm gonna disagree with you there. I think the odds are greatly in Radic's favor. He went for his patented resource rush. He went. If you look at his base, everything's got double production, so his eco is not far behind. He's got upgrades. He's got tower guards. He's got three leveled up heroes. Oh, here comes the battle plan. The that siege buff in the patch. Ooh. It's actually taking a lot of damage from the Fallon. Yeah. Oh, and uh, that's that's the counter stun coming out from Radic there. Excellent move. Yeah, that outpost is done for, and Rohirrim is going to lose his entire army. Right now, I see what you meant with Tower Gods are awesome. Yes, they don't die. They, they really just don't die. You need veterans to kill them. <coughs> and Rohirrim has really, not made I, veterans. I've not seen one veteran of Kazakh in battalion in all the matches we've streamed, but I'm really disappointed. Well, you know why? It's because people are really afraid to make them, because it is a serious risk. If somebody is to kill that travel camp, that early game, that's 400 resources down the drain, and in addition, that's a, a farm that's not making you any money. It doesn't generate resources. So it is a big risk, But and on a map like this, um, it's, a, it's one that I would say is not worth taking until late game. But um, on certain maps like Brandywine, where the farms near your base are very easy to protect, I would say that going for the veterans there is a very good move. Uh, looks like Rohirrim oh, decided to demolish one of his stoneworks and build a Dwarven Forge instead. Way. Now he's going for the heavy armor. Uh, it doesn't matter though. That ar the army's already on the field oh, for right. Gondor. He's got, if he pushes forward now and takes the other outpost, he can push right to the base. Do have Dwalin out. Few level 5 Gondor soldiers, level 2 tower guards. Level 8 Baragond, he can cast, if you look at his ability, Savior of Trouble, it can basically halve the cost of Aragorn should he die. The revival cost. Very good supportive hero. Yes, he's an excellent hero. Uh, he's excellent once you level him up. He's not so good early on. I guess his uh, his Citadel Guard summon's pretty useful early game, but his abilities aren't that useful early on. They come into play late game. Where is Aragorn? I can't see him in the in the cluster here. Do you see him? No, he really blends in well. Uh, I just wanted to see what level he was. I'll keep an eye out for him in the next battle. I'll have a look at him. I'd just like to note that 
It seems Radic is going for a ram spam. No, he just ma he's making traps now. He's got two trebuchets. But if you look at the northeast, he's going with a nice secretive attack with his rams. Oh yeah, two of them. Deal with some farms. It's a good move. While keeping his main army, uh, um, distracting the main army of Rohirrim. And none of those guys have any upgrades. Dwalin is there, but he's only level one. Oh, no, I, I think this battle will belong to Radic. I agree. We, we've got Aragorn level seven. When he gets level ten, he could wipe out entire armies by himself. Doubt about it. He needs to micro his Aragorn to kill Dwalin. Where is Dwalin? I just see one giant cluster. Yep. But oh, and, it, it, and if you... If we both stop talking for a second, listen, and listen to how many dead dwarves you hear. All you well, hear is dead. Corpses. Yeah, all you hear, that was Pippin's, uh, Pippin's um, Blade of the Nondor. But if you listen, all you'll hear is, is dwarf death cries. You're not going to hear any Gondor death cries. <laughs> Those trebuchets destroying that barracks, even with the uh, buff from his stonemasons. Mm. And th those are You're unupgraded right. too. Get dwarves dying left and right. Yeah, it's Blood just from this is a slaughter. Yeah, even right here, I'm throwing out the good game. He knows he can't win. This is what I'm talking about, people. This is the Paladin proof of how you play with Gondor right here. This is it. <laughs> I hope Rohirrim right will fight to the end. Oh no, he wants to quit. Well, that was a good game. Yeah. Well played from Radic and Rohirrim. Yeah, that was Rohirrim's main problem. Uh, he didn't make veterans. <laughs> <laughs> I said it several well, times. He needed to make veterans. I, I think he should have gone for upgrades earlier in the game. I think what I would have done is, once I had map control like he had, I would have destroyed one of the farms near my base, and I would have started getting veterans. Uh, it is a big risk to go for veterans early on this map, because you don't have a farm you can easily protect. But I think that once you have map control, there's really no good reason to not go for Dwarves of Khazad Doom. They're very strong. They can give your heroes mithril, make them stronger. So, very I'm, effective units. Oh, I was stuck on an out of sync screen there for a second. All right. Well, for the folks just watching on my YouTube channel, thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you do enjoy, make sure to rate, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's grow the Adane mod bigger than it's ever been. Uh, until the next video, stay awesome.